we've seen loads of change in how we market and what our strategy is in the last couple of years. You know, it's some, you've heard it said a million times, but COVID massively accelerated what we were doing online. Um, but then you've got EVs coming into play. So we're trying to talk to, to the consumer very differently and where before the strategy would be, it was all about generating leads, it's all about selling cars. Now it's more about edu- just education. So driving traffic to the website, but to educate them on how much it might cost them to have an EV, you know, cost of ownership, so where can they charge? Um, so that that really changes the way we do everything, I think. Pretty much from a marketing perspective, it's generally the same. It follows a rhythm. Um, and I think at the minute, because we have don't have volume and we don't have stock coming through and, you know, new cars are taking a while, we don't want to necessarily be doing the same thing. So it means that we need to get a little bit more creative, I think, than usual. And it's quite exciting um, sort of looking at like now we don't have loads and loads of part exchanges coming in for new cars. We've obviously got them starting to trickle through now that we're going to deliver it. But, you know, we don't have this massive amount of stock that then we can like, you know, oh, now we need to discount it. And, you know, with the used car prices being so high and, you know, managing that, it's without being cliched, it's unprecedented, isn't it? But that (laughs) means that then we can really, you know, it's really exciting. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity for us there to do things a little bit differently than we have done previously i don't expect to give you to give us all your secrets but what what you know what what in particular is it is it that content strategy that's really so really obviously we up? do have um the content strategy there and we are looking at um you know our blogs and you know that kind of thing to sort of drive uh, drive the traffic and we're looking at sort of how we can deal with leads when they come in and because I sort of work a lot more on the operations side of things I do deal with marketing as well but from the operations perspective making sure that when people are coming through that we are managing them in the right way because we Mm. don't have those huge lead volumes again coming through Um, so it's making sure that we really are making the most of everything and dealing with customers in different ways to how we were before. If a customer walked into your showroom and spoke to the receptionist and said I want to know about this car and the receptionist said okay just um sit there for a couple of hours and someone will come and give you the answer our online showrooms are our biggest showrooms so we shouldn't be saying that to them either oh okay you want to know okay well if you could just log off for a couple of hours and someone will pick up the phone and call you in a minute it's not the same experience um so we, we, we pulled away from using agencies and we've now got a real team of, of fully-fledged sales executives that are there from 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. We have got all the online um, purchasing and things, which we didn't have two years ago. Uh, and just trying to keep, keep the balance, I think, is one, one thing which we're, you know, is now an important part of of our strategy you're trying to general. encourage those part exchanges to keep coming i guess and, and keep customers yeah. coming back as well you know what 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 do you think's key to sort of customer retention at the moment it, it's quite hard to to lock people into to keep coming back to your dealership isn't it yeah and i think that we have a really positive um again it where we are location wise then you know we cover a lot of one area um, of the country. So I think from our perspective, then it's making sure that every time a customer comes in across every department, so for like our servicing and things like that, then by making sure that we give a customer a really good experience, then then that's helping us to drive that sales. And for things like um, we've invested in technology uh, in the sort of the servicing department and to making sure that we're keeping um, in touch with customers all the way through, not just when we want to sell something because we don't have the sales and things all the time. So it's that relationship building and the, the nurturing of the customer that we've been really sort of concentrating on and um, just keeping keeping in touch and making sure that we're kind of always there um, through, through that journey so that then when it does come that they go, do you know what, now... You know, I can, I've looked on your valuation tool and I can see that I'm going to get a really good price in my car. Making sure that we are their local, family-friendly sort of dealership that then they're going to come back to. So rather than it just being we're the cheapest price or, you know, we'll give you 
free fuel or whatever it yeah. is that we sort of really used to use a lot of in the industry. And I think now it's more about having that really good relationship with our customers and making them feel like we are going to look after them. Because that's been a real challenge for the industry for, for well, forever, hasn't it, really? That ultimately, customer customers may buy on a three-, four-year buying cycle. In the meantime, you'll see them once a year probably for the service, but actually keeping your business in their, in their mindset, and particularly in a, in a market nowadays where it's so easy to be disloyal, it's so easy to go onto Google or Autotrade or wherever and find another car, that you can, another dealer that you can go to. Um, it must be a real challenge for, for dealers to, to overcome that now. Yeah, I think especially with the fact that now you don't even have to go to a dealership. You, you can get your car delivered to your door like you would with your Amazon shopping. That's sort of yeah. now what we... And I think that as a dealer group, then obviously, you know, we're looking at how we can still stay in the market of that and, you know, how we need to change to c- compete in that area. But at least at the minute, then, no, it may not be that somebody who purely wants to buy online will our dealership experience won't compete with that because that's not what they want. They don't want to spend an hour having a cuppa and looking round and, you know, discussing, oh, what does this colour look like in person and things. So I think that it's a very different, it's very different customers. And it's at the minute Then I think we do a really, you know, we're really strong in our dealership experience. But then it is how do we still tap into that alternative um, and sort of, Com, uh, and compete with that. I guess that's what you've seen as well, April. Is it with with your development of an online sales department? Mm. It, it's that yeah. different customer dynamics, but might be the same customer, might be a new customer, but certainly someone who's looking for a different journey. Yeah, but I, I think we we've said right from the beginning that it's not about. Uh, they, you're, they, we don't have two. You don't have two pots of customers: the customers that want to come to the showroom, and the customers that want to buy online. It's just about making sure that they can do what they want when they want, and we do see that. Um, very rarely do you actually get someone that clicks through that entire journey, and then we deliver the car to them. They, at points, do want to talk to the site, um, or they do want to come and test drive the car. Uh, 